A quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Have you ever traveled somewhere and thought, I wish everyone could experience how incredible this place is? Joe Hansen thinks that feeling might be a key ingredient to getting people invested in environmental conservation. Joe's a science writer, biologist, and video producer. He's got a lot to say about the power of sharing nature's story, its sense of wonder, and the investment people can make when they can see it and experience it with their own eyes. Do you remember the first time that you tasted snow? Do you remember the first time that you tasted 200-year-old snow? Well, I do. I licked it right off the wall of a cave made of ice sitting underneath a glacier just north of Juneau, Alaska. And I've got to tell you, this was the purest, crispest, coldest H2O I've ever tasted. Of course, it wasn't snow anymore by the time that I tasted it. It was this gorgeous blue glacial ice. Really, if you ever have the chance to lick a glacier, you really got to do it. Now, glacier ice is this color blue that almost defies description because it only occurs in these places, and you can really only compare it to itself. So around 200 years ago, much higher up that mountain valley, this ice fell as snow. And the atmosphere through which those snowflakes fell was very different from our own. It contained a full one-third less carbon dioxide than our atmosphere does. Now, those snowflakes were buried by flurry after flurry, until eventually every last bubble of air was squeezed out from between those delicate little crystals, and it formed a solid mass. Yet somehow, that solid mass was still able to flow, and was buried and then carried along this journey by gravity and time in a frozen time capsule called Mendenhall Glacier. Until one day, that ice, that mountain of old snow, it, it crossed this little bump in the terrain and it created a void, a cave. And that's where it met me. And if I had known the incredible journey that this, uh, this H2O had been on, I might not have drank it and turned it into pee, but <laughs> here we are. I was only able to see this because I was there at the right place in the right moment in time. And I'm sharing it with you today because it no longer exists. You know, the same slow creep of gravity and time that, that brought all of that ice from the mountain down to my mouth, it does ensure that any ice cave has a short lifespan. But as they disappear, these ice caves are usually replaced by others as the mass of that glacier sort of flows in behind it. It's this really beautiful cycle of death and rebirth of these temporary places. At least that's how the story has gone for thousands of years. That story is now different. Because this glacier is dying. It is melting faster than time and snow can replace it. Now, when I visited this cave, I, I didn't know that I'd be giving its eulogy one day. Uh, I went there to make a video for my YouTube channel. My channel is called It's OK to be Smart. And I make educational videos that are viewed by millions of people around the world who join me on these little curiosity journeys, as, as I tell really bad dad jokes. The video is about physics. It was about why glacial ice is this beautiful color blue. And the answer is really, really cool. Now, it's not because of the same reason that the sky is blue. It's not because of light bouncing off of little particles. It's not reflecting the color of the sky or anything like that. No, it's way, way cooler than that. So inside of that glacier are a bunch of water molecules, like thousands at least. And they're in there. And even though it's a solid mass, they're vibrating. Molecules just vibrate. 
It's what they do. They're like amped up TED speakers or chihuahuas or something. <laughs> so water is this V-shaped molecule. You've got an oxygen right here, and then you've got two hydrogens up here, okay? Now, some of those water molecules are in there, and they're vibrating like this. And some are vibrating like this. This is the glacier vibrating water dance. So light vibrates too, because it acts like a wave. So if light comes along at the right color, at the right frequency or wavelength, it turns out it can be vibrating in sync with that water molecule. And that water molecule sucks it right up. And that color of light is subtracted out. Okay, so it turns out that one of water's favorite wavelengths to suck up when it's doing its little vibration dance is around 700 nanometers. That is reddish orange light. And if you take the white light of the sun, all the colors, subtract out red orange, you're left with that beautiful blue color. You can only see this when you're deep inside of a glacier as the light is passed through several meters of all these vibrating water molecules. And this is the same reason that the ocean is blue. So thanks to human activities from climate change, environmental pollution, to habitat loss, more of the natural world, living and non-living alike, is under threat today than at any point in our human existence. The entire time our species has been around. We're talking more birds, more ice, more forests, more islands, insects, mammals, just about everything. But for every rhino or orangutan or coral reef or ancient tree or whatever famous and endangered thing that we've all heard of, there are tens, maybe hundreds that we never hear about. They're disappearing, but invisible and unknown. But it doesn't have to be this way. And luckily, all of you have the tools You all have a voice. You're all probably carrying a camera in your pocket. You know, our species is, is everywhere on this planet, which is part of the problem. But just imagine how many places, how many creatures, how many stories one person is in the right place at the right moment to see. And today, what one person sees, we can all see. What one person loves, we can all learn to love. Because when we all see, and we all know, and we all learn to love what we stand to lose, then we will fight harder to save it. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Vienna, Austria. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Vienna. Visit our website at ted.com slash TEDxShorts. I'm Matosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.